well, we messed up. We were going to get each other vinyls for this episode, um, and we ended up getting the same thing. Oops. <laughs> Hey, at least we know we have each other's same tastes. <laughs> we or we, we understand each other's tastes we and where we overlap, yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it's definitely jazz rock from the 70s with an emphasis on saxophone. And man, this might be the tippy top of that iceberg. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> we were talking before this, we can't pick a favorite from the album. Uh, I've got... Maybe three or four, and that's a lot when it's a seven-song album. It's nonstop goodness. I mean, if you were going to mark a 10 out of 10 album, this is this is pretty close. So Steely Dan, if you're not aware, uh, like we weren't, it's two guys, Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, um, and they basically, they write the songs and they kind of produce an engineer, but they get a different band to play each song. So each song is hand-picked musicians for whatever serves the idea of that song. There's a, a cool video of them showing all the different solos that were played for Pag, and the one that went actually on the track is definitely, I see why they picked that one. It's unique. Yeah, everything on here kind of has, it's a slightly different vibe. It says Black Cow is a disco funk number. Uh, Asia, the title track, is a Latin-tinged pop song, but all with that jazzy feel. So cool chords, really amazing production, which is a staple of Steely Dan. They just know what they're doing in the studio. All right, now into our personal uh, halls here. Uh, my first of today is Plus, Ed Sheeran. I love Ed Sheeran. If you don't know that about me, now you do. Um, this is the last one of the collection. I have all of Ed Sheeran, and funny enough, the last album I'm adding is his first album, which came out in 2011. And this was when he just started getting big. So this is his like A team, um, grade eight, uh, Lego House was a big one on this album. Not my favorite album from Ed, but definitely one a really good album that made him big. One thing that I love about Ed and why I like all of his albums is that you can follow how he grew up and his evolution of music. Every album he like matured and changed and it you can it reflects his life he clearly goes from a teenager in this album and then his latest album with subtract um he is clear clearly a dad with a kid and a wife and that's just one thing with every single one of his songs he's got so much emotion and they're just simple like they're simple chords like there's not much to the music um but the lyrics and the emotion and you can tell he's putting everything into these songs is what gets me every single time anything on ed sheeran there no I'm, <laughs> I'm not an ed sheeran fan and neither is tom york from radiohead he he's publicly dissed ed sheeran uh that's pretty funny that's but great. i've got radiohead in rainbows here kind of completing um my collection of, of radiohead albums for the time being i still don't have a moonshade pool or, or hail to the thief or king of limbs but this is kind of a combination of the OK Computer era, and then also like the Kid A Amnesiac era. So you've got the electric beeps and bloops, but also some like hard rock stuff. So with 15 Step, it opens with these, you know, kind of bleeps and bloops doing the, the drum beat. But then you get this really nice jazz guitar riff in there. Um, Body Snatcher has a real kind of garage rock riff to it. Man, that, that song is that song is mean. And I love Tom York's lyrics on this album. Body snatchers. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, nude. Don't get any I big ideas because they're not going to happen. <laughs> I just. I like. I like wallowing. I suppose. <laughs> Some. Sometimes you just. You need to. You, you need that reinforcement to kind of dig you out of a hole. And and Radiohead does that really well. But that's not to say that there's not some uplifting tracks on this album because there are well you know what's funny is because i was listening to asia and trying to find albums for you um and spotify likes to shuffle once i'm done with my playlist and it actually started playing those songs i was like these are pretty good okay, <laughs> so I, actually, okay. I actually put that album on my playlist too cool cool so i've All been right. listening to it it's good sweet well that's it for in rainbows cool my next album is leon by leon 
love when they just use their name. Um, but this is another wife pick here. Never heard of her before, never listened to her before. And now when I put it on, I enjoy it. It's actually really good. Have you ever listened to Leon? No, I've never heard of that artist. So Leon, I, I don't think she's too big. Uh, like I said, I don't follow uh, Leon too much. Um, so I don't really know. She has that vibe. Like one of the things that it uh, recommended on Spotify that was similar was Vampire Weekend, which is another band that I listen to that I, I really love. So if you know Vampire Weekend, you'll probably like her as well. My wife does not agree with me on this, but I thought she kind of sounded like um, later Miley Cyrus. Oh, interesting. With like that, not as raspy, but that, like that soulful, um, just like a little unique, but like, clearly she can sing right mm -hmm. um so that it, like as said, my wife doesn't agree but that's what i was thinking um and, and it is like slower like kind of vibe songs but good album good album all in all well having not heard the album i agree with your wife <laughs> <laughs> i'm typically wrong <laughs> next up on my list diving back into that prog universe that i can't seem to swim out of Yes, I have just been obsessed with Yes over the past couple months. Um, this is probably their most well-known album because uh, it's got Roundabout, Yes's big song, but it's also got South Side of the Sky, which is super cool, Long Distance Runaround, which is great. Um, man, look at that. Just look at that Roger Dean artwork there. It's so cool. It's got like a little booklet inside with some more artwork. Every member of the band got a solo piece that kind of, you go from one, you go from Roundabout to uh, Kansas Brahms, which is the keyboardist solo piece, Rick Wakeman. He dresses like a wizard. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Man, it's just, it's, all the musicians are just the top of their field. It's absolutely wild what they're doing here. Have you ever heard of Yes? No, I haven't. Okay. You should, you should definitely, you should check, them, check out. them out. Do you remember in School Rock? When Jack Black is handing out CDs to the kids, he gives one to Lawrence, the p the keyboardist. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And he hands him this album and oh. says, "Listen to the keyboard solo on Roundabout. It will blow the classical music yes. out your butt." I do remember that <laughs> line. Okay, now so I know. That is, okay, that's fragile. My next album is Florence the Machine Lungs, which is a good album. Um, the only album that I really know by um her, I I or band. It's not just her. Um, but I can't forget about the machine. I know the machine. Um, so I need to listen to more albums by them because it's, th this one's fantastic. I think this is the more well-known one with dog days are over. Um, I think the other one that's big on here is cosmic love. If you ever heard these songs, but <laughs> I am that guy that, um, heard dog days are over on guardians of the galaxy three and was like, that's fantastic. And started listening to the album from that. <laughs> and so I bought it and it's every song on this album is good or just as good or better than dog days are over. So just letting you know there. I'd, I'd hope they were better. I really don't like no. that song at all. Really? I, I can't stand it. That it, She's just not my, my type of thing. Okay. Well, it's the same vibe through all the music. Yeah, so if you I, don't, I don't like that it's song, it's not my thing. Yeah, you won't. Anyway, going back to Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is, so they had Fragile, then they came out with an album called Close to the Edge, which is widely regarded as their best. This album is basically for Close to the Edges. Close to the Edge was the title track, and it was an entire side long. So this is two records and four songs. That is four about 20-minute songs. It's dense. It kind of slogs in some places, but man... The Revealing Science of God, Dance of the Dawn, makes the whole thing worth it. That is just what an incredible vibe that makes me think about just the beauty of nature. It just makes me want to go run through the woods or sit by a pond and listen to the frogs and the fish hopping and just look at that artwork. This might be some of my favorite artwork that I've ever seen. Probably my favorite album cover. I adore it. It was... The story of the album is inspired by um, an autobiography of a yogi. So, you know, kind of a Hindu or Indian spiritual uh, guide. Okay. Um, so if you're familiar with like the Beatles when they went to India and they were kind of talking with the Maharishi Yogi and stuff, um, John Anderson from Yes was also inspired uh, by that kind of uh, Eastern philosophy. So really kind of abstract lyrics 
some of the songs are better than others. I will say The Ancient is probably my least favorite. Pretty uh, pretty dense song there and, and pretty wild sounds that they're pulling off. But I do appreciate the whole thing. All right. And with my last album of this haul, I had to get the last album of Hiam. So oh, yeah. I got part three. Nice. So I, this is their last one. They only have three out. Um, so I was like, I'm going to complete my collection. Um, it's up to par with all their other stuff. It's just as good. They're just really talented. And uh, yeah, I, I I don't know if I have too much to say on this album. I still recommend you need to check out the first one. Um, I'm trying to think of my favorite one on this one. Yeah, like, what is fubbed? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just seeing them. Fubbed. I saw 3 a.m. and I was just, I'm thinking of the Matchbox 20 song. Yeah. You know? And then I saw F U B T. What is that? I, I can't can't picture that song. Fubbed. Fubbed. I was gonna recommend leaning on you though. I think that's my favorite on this okay. album. Yeah. Cool. Anyways, good album. It keeps up with their other ones. Um some people say that it's uh they're like better than their second one and almost their peak. Um, but I, I'll still say that my favorite is one, and I almost I think I'm <laughs> one of the few that will put two above this one as well. Um but it's all it's all right there. It's all up to preference. So get them all. My last one is a new record from 2023 by an, a relatively new band called Geese. This is 3D Country, and this is blues rock at its core. Some ZZ Top in there. But the singer is oscillating from the Strokes vocalist, uh, Julian Casablancas, I believe is his name, to Tom York from Radiohead's Falsetto. All the musicians are on point. And everything is to serve the vibe of the song. It's so unique, yet so familiar at the same time. I I don't know how else to describe it. I don't know what this is. It's goofy. They're definitely goofy, goofy guys, and I like that a lot. The lead single from this is Cowboy Nudes, so I would uh, recommend giving that a listen. It's not what you think it is. I don't know why it's called that. I don't think they even say that in the song. That's not the chorus. <laughs> I don't know, man. They're just kind of doing their own thing, and I am digging it. They're also opening for King Gizzard, and I'm going to see King Gizzard concert, so I'm super excited to uh, to hear them. Well, that was our haul for this video. Um, if you if you got any vinyl um, since our last video, let us know. Put it in the comments. Um, let us know what vinyl you like out of our hauls, um, and give us recommendations. Give us some music. If you if yeah, you... what's your favorite album? Drop down in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Thank you, guys. Bye. Cool. <laughs>